Hello, Rebels! Today we have a very special guest here. She is one of the most powerful and mysterious queens who ever lived. She hopped in her secret time machine to travel all the way from ancient Egypt so she could tell us her story. You may know her as the Queen of the Nile, the last pharaoh of Egypt, or even the lady on all those old coins. Please, let's give a warm welcome to the one, the only, Cleopatra. ATM Hotep, hello. Oh, please, you don't have to bow. I mean, you can if you want. It's great to be here. It is such an honor to have you. I know you had a long way to travel to get here today. Was it 2,000 years ago that you were alive? Hmm, this is a difficult question. See, we mark time with sundials and moon cycles. But uh, 2,000 years sounds close enough. People in your time appear to be confused about who I was and what I stood for. That is exactly what I wanted to talk to you about today. Why are there so many different versions of your life story? <sighs> I have always been so powerful that my enemies feel they must ruin my reputation. They claim that I was cruel and conniving. Others merely talk about my long hair and makeup. But there is a lot more to my story. And I want to tell you what really happened. Thank you. We are so delighted to hear the truth. Nahem, te. I appreciate that. Now, let me tell you how it all began. The year was 48 BCE. I was at my home in the spectacular royal palace of Alexandria, Egypt. And the powerful Julius Caesar had just arrived. Caesar was the emperor of Rome, the capital of the biggest republic on earth at that time. And he was not pleased. Many craved the power that he had, and he had been forced to fight many enemies to maintain his rule. Like Caesar, many envied my power too. Even my own brother Ptolemy wanted me dead. In order to talk to Caesar, I decided to hide inside a fine woven rug that would be presented to him as a gift. Oh, another grueling day. Oh, I look forward to a rest. Prepare my chambers. Who goes there? Uh, greetings and salutations, Honourable Caesar. Uh, forgive me for interrupting, but there is a man here to deliver a gift for you. A gift? What kind of gift? A rug, most generous Caesar. Hmm. Very well. Show him in. Thank you, noble Caesar. I am honoured to present this precious rug to you. It is the command of my queen, Cleopatra, that I deliver the gift directly to you, and to you alone. Mm. All right, then. Leave it here. You are all dismissed. <gasps> ah! Ha! You should have seen the look on Caesar's face when I rolled out of the rug. His crown nearly tumbled from his noble head. It was as if he'd never seen an Egyptian queen before. <sighs> that must have been a wild surprise. But I'm sorry. Wait, can we go back for a moment? Why was your brother trying to kill you? Ah, uh, I will explain. Among the ruling class of ancient Egypt... Family relationships were uh, different than you might see in your time. Mm -hmm. We had to do whatever we could to maintain our power. My brother Ptolemy was terribly jealous of me because I was infinitely more clever and capable than he. We were intended to rule Egypt together, but he could not bear sharing this responsibility. And I feared that he was willing to start a war if it enabled him to take the throne. 
That's why I was there to speak with Caesar. Uh-huh. I had a plan to get Caesar to join forces with me. Together we would banish Ptolemy and rule over Rome and Egypt. Hail Caesar, I come in peace. I am Cleopatra, daughter of Isis and queen of Egypt. I am here to present you with an auspicious proposition. An auspicious proposition? Fancy words for a lady to use. What can you, a young queen on the run, offer me, the greatest leader of Rome? I am here to offer you the world. The world, do you claim? <laughs> How will you accomplish that? Let us join forces. Together, we can defeat Ptolemy, king of Egypt, and join the realms of Egypt and Rome. One kingdom, one world, and Caesar as the supreme ruler. Tempting. And if we don't defeat your brother? <laughs> Do not fear. A vast part of the Egyptian army and population remains loyal to me. We will take Ptolemy by surprise and form the mightiest kingdom in history. And what would you like from me in return? You and I will be the only rulers of this vast land. Intriguing. Please, it has been a long day, Cleopatra. Let us retire for the night and discuss this further tomorrow. Tomorrow might be too late, Caesar. We shall see. You only have a few soldiers with you. Uh, you there! And Ptolemy's <clears throat> army could attack any time. Escort Cleopatra to some place safe. You will not be able to hold him off for long. Bene quies care. Good night, Cleopatra. <sighs> Not the answer I had hoped for, but I could tell that Caesar was intrigued. He was clearly taken with me, impressed that I was fluent in his native tongue of Latin. Mm -hmm. I actually speak nine languages. Languages are very important when you rule over vast territories. If you learn to speak someone else's language, then you can make everyone feel understood. Communication is power. Great point, but... Wait one second, how did you first become queen anyway? You see, in ancient times, power transferred down from parent to child. No voting, no tests, the power was yours. But you had to be strategic to keep it. Uh -huh. I had been queen of Egypt since my father died when I was 18 years old. But at the same time, Ptolemy was put in as king when he was only 10. Those three years of co-rulership with Ptolemy were exhausting. Ptolemy's heart was confused and his thoughts scattered. He was relentless at attempting to dethrone me, and all of this fighting between my brother and I disrupted our trade agreements with Rome. I feared more troubles were on the horizon. Just as I predicted, my brother was battering at the palace gates hoping to defeat Caesar and I at the same time. An attack! That's the moon gate! Caesar! Ptolemy is advancing on the palace! How are we placed? The tenth slingers are at the moon gate. The twelfth are holding all other positions. The rest are in reserve. Fear not. More troops will be here shortly. Caesar was smarter than I thought. He had arranged for more soldiers to reach Alexandria just in time for this battle. And what a battle it was. Fighting continued for nearly a year. But ultimately, we did indeed defeat Ptolemy and force him to leave forever. Wow. And Caesar and I solidified ourselves as the rulers of Egypt and Rome. A new beginning for our kingdoms. And yet, trouble was still looming close. Oh, no. The Romans were clearly not fond of me. They felt I had too much influence over Caesar, which might have been true. He was rather infatuated with me and put up gold statues of me throughout Rome. We also had a son together, 
A son. A future ruler? Named Caesarian. Unfortunately, things did not continue as planned. Caesar was killed shortly thereafter, and I had to flee with my son. But I did not give up. I returned to Egypt and poured all my energy into stabilizing the Egyptian economy and ensuring everyone got food and grain, even through a severe drought. I made Egypt a world power, and nations around the globe wanted to trade with us. And I kept Egypt independent for 22 years, which was an enormous feat. I also threw some pretty legendary parties with my close friend, General Mark Antony, but that's a story for another time. Oh, speaking of time, I do need to return to ancient Egypt before it gets too late. Of course, of course. Well, we are so happy you chose to come here today. Thank you, thank you. It was my pleasure. Remember, everyone has the right to tell their own story. And everyone has a story to tell. Until we meet again. Oh, and last question, I swear. Tenepti. Did you ever see the movie they made about Farewell. you? Farewell. Cleopatra? Your Highness? <laughs> well, I guess she really had to get back to ancient Egypt. Hopefully, we can have her back to tell us more one day soon. Until next time, remember to dream big, aim high, demand the truth, and stay rebel. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This story was produced by Haley Dapkis with sound design and mixing by Mumble Media. It was written by Elena Favili and edited by Abby Schur. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan. Narration by Farah Kidwai, Gregory Connors, and Abby Schur. Original theme music was composed and performed by Electra Barjaki. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel!